Hi there, this is Azra Ali. I am head of growth at UserPilot. UserPilot is a user onboarding software and product adoption tool. Uh, we really care about user onboarding and uh, that's why we created a research lately on the state of product onboarding in 2020. And the research finding were so interesting for us, we found a couple of mistakes. And based on that, we created um, a session for product-led growth. And this is an exclusive research that we are first time sharing it with uh, you guys first. Um, and um, also hope these common mistakes that have been done by a lot of SaaS companies add value to your current onboarding. And if you're making these mistakes, then you can quickly go and fix it. Hope you enjoy the session. Cheers. The state of 2020 uh, SaaS product onboarding. Uh, research and you can get free access by clicking on this link and just dive into it if you want to learn more so first thing first how did we actually do that research right so research methodology we personally signed up for those thousand SaaS companies uh, which is in the link there um, and we spent around 120 minutes on each of them to look at their sign up flows to to look at their onboarding to look at the email sequence and it took us a lot of time it took us four months to actually do that and uh, it took us also thousands of hours thousand plus hours actually and a team of five people actually was were able to create this together but you will be curious why did we actually do it the reason why we did this because we wanted to to learn how other SaaS companies are doing their onboarding regardless of they're using user pilot or not um how how they can they're doing good stuff to so that we can learn from them and share best practices with our customers and also to find gaps mistakes and then suggest the best practices wherever we think we could be useful and um, yeah so we found six, six mistakes there's most of the SaaS companies are making with the data backed with it hopefully you enjoy this and hopefully you if you're making this mistake you can fix it so the first mistake that is very surprising to us was there was no welcome screen. Uh, around 40% of SaaS companies still don't have any kind of a new user welcome screen where they are welcoming the user, where they are telling the user, hey, um, we, we welcome you to our app and click here for the first action they want to drive to us. And this was very surprising. Um, imagine right now, for example, instead of digital world, you're in a physical world and you go to a restaurant, there is somebody at the door greeting you when you go into that restaurant and uh, after greeting in, people, comes, people come to you, the waiter comes to you and then they give you the menu card. And that menu card is basically next action, right? When you come in there, um, the same way the welcome screen work for digital world. And it was quite surprising that a lot of SaaS companies are still not greeting their users. The reason why those restaurants have that kind of experience because you want to make a great customer experience. Um, the same way you want to give a great customer experience digitally to your own app. And that's why we think it's the first reason why it's important, the customer experience. The second reason why I think this is very important is because you want to take them towards a key action inside your app. And that key action could be anything that is a first event they should do to understand the aha, of the aha moment of the app. And we found that there were not a lot of them. So 40% of them, right, didn't welcome, they didn't take the key action. The second thing we found out was that um, with our own onboarding, the, the, the screenshot that you see is that people were able, 99% of the users were able to click on those actions and go forward. And so it improves your activation rates. It improves your adoption rate in the initial user onboarding and that we found was not there. So yeah, this is one of the mistakes. and. Um, if you're doing this mistake, probably you can fix it just by signing up your own app and see if, if it's there or not. So that was the mistake number one. The mistake number two that we figured out was a lot of SaaS companies, around 72% of them, they do not have any contextual onboarding in there. Contextual onboarding seems like a heavy word, so I'll explain you what it means. Contextual onboarding is when you learn from the user behavior inside of the app and give the right pop up or tool dip the right message at the right time in their user journey. How do you do that? You do that by using custom events inside your app. And we found out that around 72% of SaaS companies do not have any custom event. When you do so, click on certain option or button, the next button does not drive you to do certain action in there. 
Yeah, so a good example um, to, to, to make you understand more is that it's HubSpot. HubSpot is an app, it's a CRM, we all know about them. HubSpot started um, product-led growth. Um, the reason why HubSpot was so good example here is because I, I was using their free tool, their free CRM, and while using their free CRM, I also installed the Chrome extension. And while installing the Chrome extension, I realized that um, that I was using it a lot, but I was not using their email templates. And um, so I was copy pasting to emails. I was copy pasting it to a couple of people. And the second time or the third time I copy pasted an email and they, they understood my behavior in there, they showed me a pop-up saying tired of copy pasting, which means that they were learning what I was doing in app and then showed me the right message at the right time. And this is very powerful. If you can do this inside your app, this would make your onboarding super powerful by having just custom events, what the user has done inside the app and what he hasn't done and show them the right thing at the right time. So how to take advantage of custom events in user onboarding? How can you think about it, right? Um, the way you can think about it is by thinking about the first initial aha, how the users uh, in the first three events they wanna do when they come inside the app, how, how do you wanna show them the key feature activation and then um, once you have done this, you can show them feature A, feature B, feature C, feature D, which is a product adoption side, which means that they have understood the value of the app. And now it's time to keep helping them discover new features. So you can have around five to 10 events uh, after user activation event to know what the user should be doing. And based on those in-app custom events that user does, you show them the next thing. So you don't leave them hanging basically. This is what I would recommend um, to, to add context inside your app. The third uh, mistake that we've seen in this research was that there was no personalized onboarding. A lot of SaaS companies, even during our teardowns, what we've seen is that a lot of SaaS companies, they go in there, they take your personal data, they take your data, and they try to understand, they collect the data basically, but they do not utilize the data inside the app. And that's something that I would highly recommend to utilize those data points that you're asking. It's just not for your CRM. It's also for the users inside the app as well. So take that data and use it to personalize the journey. And what we found out that 52% of the SaaS companies did not take advantage of the role, use case, goals, industry, employee count, whatever that is. And only 35% of them are actually using goals inside their onboarding which is a good number, but comparatively, it's still like half of the SaaS companies are not doing it. So this is something is now a norm, and we think that should, should be utilized much more effectively. So these are the three mistakes so far. The fourth mistake that we found inside the user onboarding SaaS research was that a lot of companies, again, they, since they don't have custom events set up, um, they don't know what the user is doing. So naturally, what even further boils down is they are not celebrating the events. Um, I think user onboarding should have milestones. And um, I also believe that SaaS companies have a lot of superpowers, either save the user's time and do a lot of things. It can, uh, SaaS companies have a lot of superpowers. It can make them productive. It can make them intelligent by analytics. So there are a lot of things that are there which based on different SaaS companies. And these superpowers, when somebody understood the superpowers of that SaaS company in the user onboarding, you should be able to celebrate that. And um, which was kind of a letdown that only 17% of companies are actually using user milestone. Um, and this should be part of the onboarding, which we do recommend to our customers as well. And the best way to actually add the milestone is to just have a simple checklist. Um, Userpilot also provide a simple checklist there. Um, um, you can use Userpilot checklist, but like just put any kind of checklist. Only 54 companies are using checklist and 46% are not. So checklist is now a norm, right? So checklist is something that's there and it improves activation rate and everybody knows it, knows it. but still 46% of the companies are not using it. Um, which was kind of, again, a letdown. You can add those milestones user to understand what they have done inside the app. Um, yeah, and it improves user activation as well. 
Um, so that was the mistake, the number four mistake, which was not celebrating the milestone um, and not sharing those superpowers, right? So that was something what very interesting for us. And we do would we do recommend our users to add those checklists and milestones so that the user can understand what they have achieved so far. The fifth mistake that we've seen, um, and this is something that I thought will not be there, uh, which uh, is um, that I, I thought that a lot of companies are already doing this. This was when a user does something inside the app, um, users get an in-app event, the behavior triggered event, uh, which is aligned to an email. So the email automation is not a new norm. Email automation is there. So whatever the user does something inside the app, you send them an event, hey, great, you did something. Uh, this is the next step. So not only in app, also, but also out app, onboarding is really important. And the reason why I'm saying is because um, we, uh, you see this email uh, that was fast is when the user actually installed the Chrome extension uh, in user pilot. So in user pilot, the first thing user should, when they sign up, we tell them to install the Chrome extension as you see in the welcome screen. And the second thing we tell them after installing the Chrome extension is to, is to install the JavaScript. These are two big events are uh, install, uh, try tr triggering experience. Um, so what we found out that um, after right away when the user uses an in-app event, does an in-app event, we get we, we send them an email and the email response rate was 70%. So this was the best practice that we found out which works for us. Um, and we found out that 88% of SaaS companies did not send any email based on in-app triggers. Uh, yes, they do send it based on days, but in-app events are still missing, which means that if the user does something in the first 60 minutes or two hours uh, of initial onboarding, you should, sh you should, if they have achieved something, if they've done something, you should take them to the next step by showing them an X email, which was again missing. And we do recommend uh, that to connect your in-app onboarding to out-app onboarding to completely give a great experience to the user. And uh, yeah, so that was a mistake number five. Now we have the last mistake, and this is something that we preach to our customers as well. We personally believe that product tours do not help. And the good sign is that not a lot of companies are using product tours, but 29% are still using product tours. And 70% of the companies are not using any kind of a product tour at all, or nothing, there's no product tour, there's no product education in there. Only 24 company percent of the companies have some kind of interactive walkthrough. Uh, you need to understand the difference between product tours and interactive walkthrough. Product tours are a tooltip that shows, hey, click here, next, 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 next. And interactive walkthrough is something where you tell the user, hey, click here, and then go further in there to click them. So to show them the aha very quickly. Um, Salesflare does really well. When you sign up for Salesflare, you can also look at this in our teardown here. Just search Salesflare interactive walkthrough and you will find something which is basically our teardown. This interactive walkthrough is something amazing because uh, they have actually spent time on it. And what I believe that if you are able to create a driven action-based interactive walkthroughs where you tell the user, hey, click here, then click there to understand what the feature does rather than just educating them, uh, the user is much more likely to understand the product better. And instead of just showing them product work, click next, click next, and click next. So the left example is Vangage. Um, they have a product tour in there. They tell, talk about certain buttons in their editor and the right one is Salesflare. Uh, so 24% of the companies have some kind of interactive walkthroughs, but they sh like 76% of them still don't. And I think this is a new wave of onboarding where you should utilize the clickability part, the typeability part, um, the ability for user to drag and drop, the ability the user to use the keyboard and then show them the, the interactive walkthroughs. You have an example from Superhuman where they make you click on certain things by keyboard actions. Again, that's a very interactive as well. So use those things to actually not make those mistakes. So these were the six mistakes there, which I believe that that could that could be improved and that, that were done by many SaaS companies as you see the data. And the next part is how you can quickly fix these mistakes. Either you create your own onboarding or use some on onboarding tool, or you can also use something like user pilot, right? 
and you will have a welcome screen, you will have trigger events, you will have checklists and you will have interactive walkthroughs in minutes, not in weeks. So that's also an advantage. But I'm just saying like you can use somebody else as well. Just if you're using already, you're already using a tool, maybe just look if you're making these mistakes and uh, not do it and try to test it out for yourself. So that's one thing. The second thing is like dive deeper into if you, so this was just doing part, the other part is learning. You can click on it. I will give the resources also on the page as well to click on product onboarding research and then dive deeper what other mistakes the users have done or what other data points that are there that you can learn from. You can definitely join a product adoption school. That's a five email course based education academy that we've created for free so that users can and visitors can learn from it. And if you want to improve your own product adoption, uh, not only existing product adoption, but also new user product adoption, that's, that's great for that. And the third thing is that you can, you can continuously learn from us, so I and Wes, we do onboarding teardowns every second week, and uh, we're going to share those same mistakes, and so maybe you can learn from it, and what are, what are good parts about that app, and what are bad parts about that app, um, and maybe you can learn from it, maybe it's fun for you, and um, you can also fix those in your own app as well, and maybe it gives you ideas. So that was a quick fix for those six mistakes. I'm basically done. I would like to thank you for watching this uh, uh, summit video. Perhaps it helps you. You can definitely reach out to me at that email address, azar at userpilot.co and on my Twitter, azar shad. Um, you can also comment below in the, in the summit. Uh, tell us what, what was surprising for you, what was interesting, what do you still challenge that might not be true. Obviously, you also might have signed up a couple of apps as well. Um, so very excited. This is just a starting point. I would love to discuss further on the forum and listen to what other ideas you have. If I've missed anything, a couple of mistakes Wes has also mentioned in his own definitive guide. I have not mentioned that because that's already known. Uh, I've, we, I've just given those mistakes that, were, I, that I think were relevant and a bit newer as well. So that's all from my side. Have a good rest of the day and wherever you are. Uh, and uh, keep learning and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.